this matchup from these two players. On your left is Tristan. On your right is Todd Anderson. 8-2 and two is the record for each of them. They've been given the green light. And we'll see how things do line up here for both of these players as Anderson will start things off with a wandering fumeral. Now, it's interesting that this is the first green-red ramp Eldrazi deck that we've seen. A lot of people speculated that this deck would be a big player in the format because it was so complete after the rotation. Uh, it, it was losing basically no cards, and it was already very competitive in the format. So it seemed like an easy inclusion into the new format, this deck that just ported right in. It didn't need anything else to be good. It was already a deck. It lost a couple of cards. Sure. But besides that, I, I think I agree. It was one of those decks, just like uh, kind of like Mono Red Eldrazi, that just kind of ported right over. Yes. And it was starting points for people. Um, but, but as you mentioned, it is the first time that we've seen it. Now, keep in mind, we are going to have a metagame breakdown uh, for you viewers at home from Nick Miller soon enough about what is going on here in day number two of competition. Because keep in mind, all of our six and threes did make day two. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit larger of a day two field than normal here on the SEG Tour. So we'll see exactly what this deck is up to, as there is a Tormenting Voice discarding a Fiery Temper. Goodbye, Sylvan Advocate. Get all that value, Todd Anderson. Now this blue-red control deck that Todd is playing, again, remember, Pyromancer's Goggles, Thing in the Ice, a lot of card drawing, a lot of those red effects that draw cards. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. that The deck looks to control the game and then close it out real fast with a, the big Thing in the Ice, some of the X spells, and doubling up on your burn spells with the Goggles. This will be a Traverse the Uven Wall. Now that path seems like it would line up well against the Eldrazi deck, but you need lots of mana to do it. The goggles cost five to get onto the board, mm -hmm. and the ramp deck can potentially just get up to seven mana and start casting World Breakers and really hamstring your development that way. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to be curious to see in this match as we go, assuming that Tristan does get the opportunity to cast World Breaker, is just how it lines up in this deck, as Todd's going to discard a Jace to his Jace activation. Is World Breaker still the awesome card that it was previously? Here's a thing in the ice from Anderson. Well, one of the things that we've seen in the format in general, not in this matchup, but in general, is all of the white removal exiles now. Mm -hmm. And the World Breaker can't be rebought from the graveyard when it's been exiled. Here's a Jace activation from Anderson. Now, this is one of the few decks that can turn Jace over pretty quickly and have Very it transform. Very quick, yep. So now there is Jace Telepath Unbound. Yeah, between Tormenting Voice and Magmatic Insight, this is one of the decks that can fill up its graveyard very fast. No fetch lands needed. Anderson will go with the Wandering Fumeral and pass the turn back. Jace with six counters, taking the ice with three. A waste here from Tristan Alexander. And now, an explosive vegetation. That will resolve. Two lands on the way. One is a mountain. The second, he's deciding. He'll go with a forest. Looks like a foil full art forest? Perhaps. Mixed in with his regular lands? He likes a little of this, a little of that. Does it make it easier to find? <laughs> it's not white bordered, <laughs> so I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm not asking for much, just no disgusting white bordered lands. Just the royal sampler of lands out of this man. Just so you know, the way the way that I'm gonna remove myself from magic is if they ever make a white border wastes, I'm out of here. Just done, that's it. That's it. We all have our limits. That's the one. Yeah. Where it's just gonna I'm gonna have to leave. It's gone too far. And it looks like Todd's peeled the goggles here. Oof. But he doesn't want to de deploy it right into the face. Of a world breaker. Of a world breaker yeah, that, that might be pending next turn. It's actually interesting. This is one of the few decks I think that can actually reliably kill Pyromancer's Goggles in game one. Yeah. You know, just by not doing anything special, just part of the game plan of casting world breakers. Well, and a great card out of last format that hasn't seen much play so far, Colgan's Command, would line up well against the Goggles. It's true. Surprising we haven't seen much of that card. It seems like white has largely pushed red out of the format. Okay. So now Anderson's got some decision making to do. He's got a graveyard to look over because he's got Jace. He's got to figure out how he's going to work Thing of the Ice down. Yep. He also has a card like Jorien in his hand that we saw him use to great effect in the feature match that we saw from Todd yesterday. Yeah, he's wondering if my opponent goes World Breaker next turn, what's my best path here? The thing about the goggles is it's such high upside 
Yes. You can see Tristan's going to take a look at it. We can do the exact same. Power Master's Goggles is an absurdly powerful card if it doesn't die. Like, if Todd gets one on tap with this thing, as we saw yesterday, he gets to go absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's either draw a million cards with Tormenting Voice or cast an X spell that gets doubled up. L a lot of powerful effects. But if World Breaker comes down, Todd spent his whole turn which it doesn't look like it's going to, but th Todd would have spent his whole turn getting a goggles on the board. He didn't get any counters off of the thing in the ice. Um, I don't think ultimating Jace is a reli reliable path to victory in this matchup. So there was a lot of risk to that play. Now this is interesting, right? Todd's got to be thrilled. Okay, I get to untap with the goggles. I get to go have a ball. Yes. Uh, what he doesn't know, or maybe he does if he's got the read, is that Tristan has a copy of... Ulamog in his hand. Okay. And it has the mana to cast it. Yep. So Todd's going to have to make this turn a real good one. Because he's going to draw four cards off a Tormenting Voice thanks to the goggles. And now a fifth one because of Jorien. None of those cards all that exciting, though. Kozilek's return, wrong matchup. Yeah, that's not what we want to see here. Yeah. Don't expect to see that one in the second game. No. <laughs> uh, thing in the ice, not so much. Bunch of lands, no thank you. Yeah, second thing in the ice does not interact well with the first thing in the ice. No, it does not. Somehow it is scared. <laughs> well, it's in the ice of the one that is not in the ice anymore. Well, yes. I would be too. Look at that thing. Here's Magmatic Insight. Anderson will discard a card. Drown Yard Temple for all the value. That'll bring thing in the ice down to one counter. Now Anderson has not played a land yet this turn but he will be now in Wandering Fumeral and passing the turn back. However, I think that Todd might be in some real trouble here. Though. Yeah, and the question is, what does Tristan want to get rid of on Todd's side? Yep. I think the goggles are the easy choice, but after that... I don't know what, I don't know what the choice is after that. And there's 100 triggers here. That's true. Two Sanctum, two sanctum triggers. And those are Yumei's, of course. Yeah, goggles has got to go. It looks like Jace is going to go as well. Those are reasonable choices. Yeah, at, at 20 life, I guess he's not worried about the thing in the ice flipping. Yeah, I, I, I suppose the thought process is, sure, go ahead and bounce my Ulamog back to my yeah, hand. Yeah, I'll play this again. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to cast this again. And now you can start changing, chaining the World Breakers. It just seems like a really <laughs> tough situation for Todd. It does. And Todd is someone who has put out some information about this deck, and he said that the ramp matchup is very, very difficult to win. And I can certainly see that in game number one because he does see a lot of cards and gets to do some broken things with goggles, but he doesn't put enough pressure on there, it. There's no pressure. That's the key to beating the ramp deck was coming out ahead of it. All the turns where they're trying to set up, you want pressure on the board. And he does not have that yet. And... <laughs> Todd might not even want to activate the thing in the ice anymore. Well, I don't have a ton of interest in bouncing my opponent's with the log when they yeah. get to cast it again. Well, he would get to attack for seven, bring his opponent all the way down to 13. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Is that close enough? It's a third of the way home. Yeah. All right, here we go. Another thing in the ice. Next up, Magmatic Insights. Some triggers here. Oh, it's the first thing in the ice. Is it a horror before it flips? We can take a look. I'm, I, yeah. Aha! All right. Okay. Well, I misspoke. I apologize for that. I, I suppose Wizards is better at designing cards than I am. They have more practice yeah. than us. They've done it a couple of times. So Ty gets to draw three cards there. Two from Magmatic Insight, one from Jorian, which was still on the battlefield. All right, it's an attack for spit. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> it might be an attack for seven. Can I put those words back in my yeah, mouth? Yeah. Bad. yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to be an attack for seven. Yeah, I can't imagine it's not an attack for seven. Oh, all the things in all the ice. Okay, so this is a a path for Todd I mean, here. There, there's a game plan here. It's a really weird one, but there's a game plan here. Yeah, potentially, if Tristan doesn't have the mana to recast that Ulamog next turn, yep. 
Todd can just activate the other two things in the ices because he has so many cards in his hand. And just have seven, eights hasty guys just coming out of the woodwork to kill his opponent next turn. If he wins a game where Alexander casts Ulamog twice, I'm going to be seriously impressed. That's what, all I'll say. The problem for Tristan is maybe he can't cast it the second time here. He sacrificed his Sanctum last turn. That's very true. Couple of cards here for Oath of Nyssa. I don't think he can recast it. And if it's Oath, if it's World Breaker, excuse me, don't even care about that. Nope. Thing that's bigger than that thing. Well, and World Breaker would only get to eat a land on this board. Yeah. If the Ulamog came down, it can eat multiple horrors. Yep. That's an Evolving Wilds. Two, four, seven. Yeah, it's just a world breaker. Sure. Take care of a wandering food world. That's exiled. All right, we, we'll see if Todd can get three spells I'm this turn. I'm pretty sure Tristan's just dead this turn. Especially with how fast Todd's on tapping. I'm pretty sure he's just dead. He's got Fall the Titan in hand. We'll see what the draw is. It's an island. Yeah, a lot of mana to work with here. He has at least two spells. The first one is a Lightning Axe. Yep, that counts as one. Discard that blue-red duel, the Highland Lake. Remove some ice counters. Follow up. Fall the Titan. Yeah, not Kozilek's return. Fall the Titan with Surge. And he only has to activate one of the horrors. Yeah. Yep. That is going to do it. Todd Anderson's going to win game number one here over Tristan Alexander. Blue-red control up a game over green-red Eldrazi. And that's a pretty big deal for Anderson because I think game one's very difficult for him. But these sideboarded games, as we'll see, I think might get a little bit easier. Though we are going to start with Tristan Alexander and his sideboard. And he's got four Thought Knots here. Two Roast, two Kozlek's Return, two Chandra Flamecaller, two Clip Wings, a Kozlek, the Great Distortion, another copy of Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, and a Void Winner. All right, I, I expect the Thought Knots here to come in. Um, it gets to pick the choice cards out of Todd's hand. And it's an earlier play for him to get onto the board. Um, We'll see if Tristan is kind of results-oriented here, where he's scared of Thing in the Ice and Jace and brings in these roasts to try to deal with them. Okay. Uh, a lot of the other cards are not super exciting. Chandra is always a powerful card. If Tristan has enough cards he wants to cut out of his main deck, I can definitely see just more Chandras coming into the deck as well. Other side of things here for Todd Anderson. Four Eldrazi Obligator, four Fevered Visions, three Negates, two Void Chatters, a Chandra Flamecaller, then a Kozlex Return. Is this the kind of matchup where you want Eldrazi Obligator? It probably is, yes. Okay. Um, that's a very good card when your opponent's casting five sevens and ten tens and they have to tap out to do it. Okay. Uh, on top of that, I expect the Fevered Visions to come in here. We'll, we'll see how good that is against the Green Red Ramp deck. They don't deploy their cards particularly fast. They often have lots of cards in their hand throughout the entire game. So we'll see if Fevered Visions early is a problem that Tristan can't deal with. Todd's kind of turning into a burn deck where he wants to whittle his opponent down with early damage and then finish him off. And Todd has a lot of mediocre cards in his main deck that he can cut if he wants to. Things like Kozlek's Return, the Lightning Axes, all of these cards are very mediocre against Tristan's deck. Well, those are the options there for both players. Game over two, many underway here in just a moment. So let's talk about very quickly the Season 2 schedule on the SCG Tour, which will officially begin next weekend in Columbus. That wraps up Season 1 and begins Season 2 with the Open. That does take place on Saturday and Sunday. Then we'll go to Milwaukee for our first individual date, then to Indianapolis, Atlanta, Orlando, and Dallas. And then we'll wrap up Season 2 with a couple more dates here as we take a look at the next page of Worcester, Columbus, Baltimore, our regional championships, August 6th and the 7th. We'll have more information about that. Syracuse, and then the New Jersey Invitational Weekend taking place August 19th through the 21st. Now for all of our events during Season 2, playmats are on the agenda, so we've changed a little bit. No longer is it Kitchen Link, some of our parody playmats. Instead, you get them for signing up for a particular format. So for standard, Sagarda, Heron's Grace. Great artwork. Fantastic artwork on that one. For modern, it is Ghost Quarter from Innistrad. Somehow even better artwork. And then the final one, and maybe the best of the bunch, is for Legacy, and that is Thalia Garden of Thraben. So if you sign up for a standard classic or standard open, you'll get Sagarda, Modern Classic or, or Modern Open, you'll get Ghost Quarter, and a Legacy Open or Legacy Classic. It's Thalia Garden of Thraben, a free exclusive play mats for all of Season 2. Hopefully it's a little warmer here on our next trip back to Atlanta. I would like that. Yeah. I would like that. But better, it'll be in July, so. It's a little chilly right now. Yeah. And a little busy downtown, that's for sure. 
Todd Anderson, number 14 on our season one leaderboard here on the SCG Tour, looking to head back to the Players' Championship. You'll see, of course, that he does have quite a few top eights on the resume, 26 of them. Yeah. Might be number 27 here this weekend. Maybe that's why he's got a, such a big grin in his picture I'd here. be pretty yeah. happy, too, yeah. uh, with, with that level of success. The 29-year-old who currently resides in Roanoke, Virginia, though his hometown is Alabama. Because if you know Todd, a big Alabama Crimson Tide fan. That's a town? Let's just stop. Just stop. Oh, my, just stop. Okay. We'll keep going here. <laughs> Six <laughs> open wins, three invitational top eights, one invitational win, and, of course, the runner-up of the Players' Championship in 2015, married to the wonderful Callie Anderson, who he talks about so much, as he should, and the self-proclaimed best NFL Blitz player ever. Don't challenge him. I don't, and I won't. Yep. Because he will defeat me. If I'm going to take my licks from Todd, I'd prefer to do it in the Magic setting. Yep. Tristan Alexander will be on the play. <laughs> Please only embarrass me on one front. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I ask. <laughs> Looks like Tristan's good. Todd's good. Game number two underway. It's an evolving wilds there for Alexander. For Anderson, it's a Highland Lake. He'll pass the turn back. And evolving wilds for this ramp deck is especially good on turn one because you can scoop up the wastes and then immediately start ramping on turn two with Ruin in their wake. Hasn't searched for the waste just yet, though. Well, it's, potentially he has it. Potentially he just doesn't have a green source yet, which yep. obviously is critical. It's interesting because I think that if you, if you can cast Ruin of the Wake consistently, it's a big deal for this deck. Yes. You can ramp from 2 to 4 to 6 or 2 to 4 to 7 very, very easily. Well, and if the metagame is defined by a, a lot of very good smaller creatures, you don't want to be trying to accelerate with a 2-drop creature. There is Deathcap Cultivator as an option, but if people are out to kill Jaces and other small creatures that come out early, your Deathcap Cultivator is not going to live very often. It's a thing on the ice here for Anderson. A very powerful 0-4. That was very important for him winning game number one is back yet again. An Oath of Nyssa here for Tristan Alexander. Take a look at a couple of cards. Cannot select Roast. Can select the Oath of... I don't think he... Oh, no. Is this a second miss? Yep, it is. Because you can't take enchantments. Yeah. So it was a roast and explosive vegetation and oath of Nyssa. That is two misses we've seen this weekend, which is really hard for decks to miss with. Yes. Yeah, Tristan's deck is a lot of creatures, a lot of lands, and obviously some spells. Yeah. <laughs> There's another thing in the ice. You see the game plan here for Todd. Get that online, start attacking for seven, or what would be actually 14 points of damage. Because Alexander will draw a card. Yep, those things in the ice will activate at the same time or on the same turn because they each have four counters. Explosive vegetation here for Tristan. He's going to search up a waste and a single mountain. Now, you might be thinking, why does he need to search up double mountain so he can cast Chandra? But that's what Othanissa allows him to do. He can cast a Chandra off of that because of the text on the card. So actually pretty it's a it's like a minor thing in a ramp but it does come up sometimes well it's it's easy to forget about yeah like wow. you said a, a lot of people would be searching for the second mountain there sylvan advocate's able to come in here for four points of damage now thanks to the explosive vegetation for anderson it's a tormenting voice he'll discard a drown yard the delayed madness land yes some value there to be had See what the follow-up is here for Anderson as he's starting to work those things in the ice down. He'll just play a mountain and pass the turn back over to Tristan Alexander. So now for the ramp player, it's time for a big turn. Well, you see Todd's kind of slow start here. Uh, not a whole lot going on. The things still have a lot of counters on them, and Tristan's two-drop has turned into a four-five, so Todd can't even be blocking them effectively anymore. It's a Sanctum of Ugin. That's land number seven. So those shrines are also on as well. So actually, Tristan has a lot of mana right now. Access to nine. And here's a World Breaker. Cash trigger on the stack. Wants to take care of the Shivan Reef. And he smartly goes after the colorless source. He, he might fear Eldrazi Obligator out of his opponent's deck. And you need colorless in order to activate the ability when you cast the Obligator. And now the Sanctum Moving will trigger. And so Tristan Alexander is going to attempt to chain some World Breakers here. So now, 
Sylvan Advocate will come across because there are still six lands in the battlefield. Anderson will take that four, fall down to 12. And now the follow-up is a rune in their wake. So if you're wondering, would Tristan have enough mana to be able to do his thing next turn? The answer is yes, because that is a rampant growth right now. It's going to search for another copy of Waste. And now we're going to head back Todd Anderson's way. Did Tristan have the Ulamog in his hand? No Ulamog just yet. Okay. Anticipate here from Anderson. Two negates and a tormenting voice. Tormenting voice is going to be the selection. The rest will go to the bottom. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to get to flip these horrors real quick now. Well, he better get a move on. He'll draw. Shivan Reef is what he's found. Looks like it's time for tormenting voice. Going to discard Dranyar Temple again. Thing in the ice is plural down to one. Another thing in the ice has been drawn. A lot of things happening here. Yes. Wandering Fumeral is the land. This is a fall. For zero. Yep. <laughs> fall the Titans there for zero. Now the beatdown's for a lot more than zero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 14 to be exact, as Awoken Horrors are here. And Tristan Alexander is all of a sudden down to six. He'll draw a card. And the problem here for Tristan, at least it appears that way as he plays in Evolving Wilds, is Worldbreaker does not beat Awoken Horror. No, he, he's going to have to play two creatures, chump block with both of them, and hope Ulamog shows up at some point to act as the fun police here and shut this party down because those horrors are having a ball. Yes, yes they are. There is Worldbreaker. It will take care of a land. Uh, he does have the ability to play Worldbreaker and Sylvan Advocate. Yeah. But again, those are chump blockers right now because both those Awoken Horrors are lethal. Well, and if Todd has something that can get a creature out of the way, That's just game the over. game is over, yeah. Okay. Todd will shrug his shoulders. Give the beatdowns. Both those creatures are on chump blocking duty. As big as they are, there's a thing in the ice. Here's a chase. And pass it back. And it's kind of surprising. I guess Todd's draws have just lined up well because, like you said, he talked about how difficult this matchup can be. And we see Tristan blowing up some of his lands, getting the goggles, things like that. But Todd's just had draws with lots of things in the ice. They've all come online, and they've been a big problem. Well, to me, this is a demonstration of how good Thing in the Ice is, right? Like, if th that's the kind of card that has to be good for in order for Todd to win the matchup. Yes. If Thing in the Ice is not as good as advertised, then, you know, this matchup is a disaster for him. But the fact that that's going to bounce those permanents, those permanents are so expensive, and those things are 7 eighths. They're destroying World Breakers in combat with ease. And World Breaker is not outclassed by much. Yeah, he's just roll, rolling right over those world breakers. Yeah, like just little nothing. speed bumps. Yeah. Boom, boom. 5-7, nice card. And I think Tristan's just going through some motions here. Yeah, the hand right now for him is a world breaker. He thought Knots here was the draw step, and he already had a Nissus Pilgrimage. I don't think there's a way out of this one. Yeah, I think he's a mana shy from deploying two creatures. Yep, looks to be just one short. He's doing the math right now, but I think he's come to the realization that we have is that it's just not going to be enough. He's going to cast a World Breaker. Todd does not seem to mind for very obvious reasons. Yes. Yeah. We already tried this once. Yep. I'll just pass the turn back, and Anderson will quickly untap, take a draw step, and I think we'll see him turn those things in the ice sideways, and that is going to do it. Todd Anderson is going to win this match over Tristan Alexander. Two games to zero. Blue-Red Control will take care of Green-Red Eldrazi as Anderson moves on to 9-2, and two. and more than anything, uh, I think that was an impressive display between Thing in the Ice and just this deck's velocity of being able to see a lot of cards very quickly to find what he's looking for.